To him, Alice Kettler, a wealthy and influential woman in medieval Ireland, is often remembered as one of the most notorious figures accused of witchcraft. The story of her trial and the eventual execution of her maidservant, Patronella de Mead, serves as an enduring symbol of how accusations of witchcraft have historically been wielded as a tool to subjugate and dismantle the influence of successful women. This video will explore Alice Kettler's life and success, the context of Kilkenny during her time, and how the trial serve as a cloak for darker motivations of greed and jealousy. Now, they have a card, you know, it's and glass shop. If we, before we continue with this video, if you could, um, for a moment, consider looking at these following sites. Order Mystic Wolves, Thorn O'Hare and Lado, Irish Heritage, History, Culture, Myths and Legends, and Pride of the Emerald Isle of Rue, from Argyll. Also, if you enjoyed this video, if you could like, subscribe, share, or comment. Also, if you wish to um, support the upkeep of the channel by donating to the above link or going to the about page and click on the buy me a coffee link. All donations are greatly appreciated. Grove me a mark with. Born around 1280 to a Flemish family that settled in Ireland, Alice Kettler emerged as a prominent figure in Kilkenny, a normal controlled town, during a period when women rarely held significant power. Through a series of strategic marriages to wealthy men, Alice amassed considerable wealth. Each of her four husbands, all successful merchants or moderate landers, left her a substantial inheritance upon their debts, which Alice skillfully managed by expanding. By investing in businesses, managing her late husband's estates and lending money, she accumulated a fortune that allowed her to live in prosperity and independence. Her affluence and independence, however, set her apart in a society where women, especially wealthy ones, were expected to remain under the guidance and control of, of a husband or a male relative. For many of her contemporaries, her independence was both unusual and for some unacceptable. Additionally, her status as an outsider in Kilkenny, having come from a wealthy Flemish family rather than an Irish or a normal one, likely intensified existing tensions, further fueling animosity against her. Alice's business acumen and self-determination made her an easy target for accusations from those who were envious or resentment of her success. At the time of Alice Kettler's life, Kilkenny was a bustling Norman walled town, fortified to protect its citizens and wealthy inhabitants from potential threats. Kilkenny was part of the Anglo-Norman controlled territory in Ireland known as the Pale, where the influence of Norman culture, laws and Catholicism shaped everyday life. The town's economy and was driven by trade with a vibrant market and a population of merchants, artisans and farmers. While it was a wealthy town by Irish standards, Kilkenny was a place of stark class divisions where the rights and privileges of the upper classes often conflicted with the rest of society. Laws were heavily biased towards protecting the wealthy and influential, with religious and political authorities working hand in hand to maintain social order. Catholicism, being the primary faith, played an enormous role on the lives of the people and deviance from accepted religious practice or unusual displays of wealth and power often drew suspicion with and ire. Within this context, accusations of witchcraft and heresy were potent tools, often used by church authorities to control the populace. In 1320, Pope uh, John the Twenty Second issued a papal bull or formal decree that explicitly condemned witchcraft and heresy, known as Super Ilius Specula. This document marked the Vatican's official declaration that witchcraft was punishable by the Church, framing it as a threat to Christianity itself. The case against Alice Kettler began in 1324 following the complaints from her stepchildren, who alleged that she had used sorcery to murder her fathers and steal their inheritance. Her accusers claimed that Alice had poisoned her husband to acquire their wealth, and she practiced witchcraft, summoning demons and sacrificing animals as part of her rituals. These accusations, however, were likely rooted less in genuine suspicion of, rest of witchcraft and more in a desire to reclaim the wealth that she had acquired through her marriages. Alice's stepchildren, particularly the children of her fourth husband, Sir John Lepore, had much to gain if she were removed from the picture. 
as they stood to inherit a significant portion of her fortune. The accusations against Alice were thus a means to mask the real, the real motives of her detractors, greed and jealousy. Her refusal to relinquish control over her finances and properties made her a target. In an era where women, especially widows, were often vulnerable to exploitation, Alice's financial acumen and assertiveness made her an anomaly. The case against her reflects not only the tensions around inheritance and wealth, but also a broader societal discomfort with a woman wielding so much power independently. Bishop Richard Ledreed, a zealous Franciscan bishop, took up the case against Alice with vigour. He was deeply concerned about rooting out heresy and any perceived threat against the church's moral authority. Ledreed used the accusations against Alice as an opportunity to demonstrate his power over both the religious and secular communities in Kilkenny. The trial became a public spectacle, with the bishop accusing Alice of having a familiar demon named Robin, Artisan, whom she allegedly used to carry out her evil deeds. She was also accused of sacrificing animals, concocting potions and using magical spells to seduce and kill her husbands. Alice, sensing the danger, fled Kilkenny, likely due to her connections and resources that allowed her to evade arrest. However, her maidservant, Petronella de Mead, was not so fortunate. Under torture, Petronella was forced to confess to assisting Alice in her supposed magical practices, detailing rituals and incantations that were likely invented or exaggerated under duress. As a result, Petronella was condemned and burned at the stake, the first recorded execution for witchcraft in Ireland. Alice's escape left her stepchildren and their allies unable to reclaim the wealth as she had taken with her, but Petronella's fate served as a stark reminder of the lengths to which the authorities would go to enforce control. Though Alice Kettler managed to escape, the trial of 1324 left a profound impact on Ireland's history. It highlighted the tension between secular and religious authorities, as well as the fragile position of women in society, particularly those who were independently wealthy. While Alice escaped the clutches of the church, the tragic fate of Patronel de Mead underscored the cruelty with which the powerful could enforce their will upon the vulnerable. This case also exposed hypocrisy inherent in witch trials as a tool of power. The accusations against Alice were never about genuine fears of witchcraft or heresy, but rather about controlling her wealth and the autonomy it granted her. By branding her a witch, her enemies could cloak their greed and resentment in a veil of piety, leveraging society's fear of the supernatural to achieve their ends. This pattern would repeat throughout history, with witchcraft accusations used to discredit, suppress and punish women who dared assert themselves in a male-dominated societies. The trial of Alice Kettler serves as a stark reminder of how witchcraft accusations have been used throughout history to mask underlying motives of greed, jealousy and control. Rather than focusing on religious beliefs or actual evidence of witchcraft, these accusations were often a convenient means for individuals or institutions to seize wealth, eliminate rivals and reinforce social hierarchies. Alice's success and independence challenged societal norms and her detractors exploited the prevailing fear of witchcraft to strip her of her rights and tarnish her legacy. In the end, the story of Dame Alice Kettler underscores a broader truth of how societies have historically treated powerful women. When other methods of subjugation failed, accusations of witchcraft provide an effective means to dismantle the influence of successful independent women using fear as a weapon to enforce conformity. Alice's case remains a powerful illustration of how deeply rooted biases, jealousy and the desire for control have driven some of history's most notorious witch trials. Sinead and Scheel, Gorb Mavgwiv er vor quid tama, is Mr. Sean Atuma, Sláin